stuck in a growth mindset. Our objectives. By the end of this lesson, we will understand what growth and fixed mindsets are, how we can change the way we face challenges, doing challenging work is the best way to make the brain stronger and smarter. So, for the first task, you will need a blank piece of paper. If you can cut this blank piece of paper into a square, it doesn't matter what size square it is, but that is what you will need. Your challenge is to create an origami penguin from the sheet of paper in front of you. So this is what you're aiming to create from the sheet of paper in front of you. Have a go now. If you need to pause the video to do this, then you can. Okay, so did any of your origami penguins end up looking like this? Have a think of these questions. Did you give up immediately? Did you try and then give up? Did you expect to fail? Did you expect to succeed? So the first task in your booklet is a quiz. If you can open your booklets and, compl and complete the quiz, answer honestly compared to how you just approach the penguin challenge, not how you think you should answer. Don't read on. Okay, so for the first quiz, if you can put a tick next to which you believe, whether it's strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree. Once you've done the ticks for questions 1 to 20, on the next quiz, on the next page, if you can circle around the number that you put the tick in. Okay, so for example, if you tick disagree for number one, on the next page you'd be circling the two there. And you do that right the way down. Again, if you need to pause the video to do this, then you can. So, the results. If you had a score, so when you added them up, if you had a score of 45 to 60, you are believed to have a strong growth mindset. If you had a score of 34 to 44, you are believed to have a growth mindset with some fixed ideas. If you had a score of 21 to 33, you were believed to have a fixed mindset with some growth ideas. And if you had a score of 0 to 20, it's believed you have a strong fixed mindset. Will your mindset begin to change this lesson? So, what we're going to do now is watch this video. Watch the video carefully and listen to what it has to say because your next task will be answering questions on this video. Not so long ago, many scientists believe that the brain did not change after childhood that it was hardwired and fixed by the time we became adults. But recent advances in only the last decade now tell us that this is simply not true. The brain can and does change throughout our lives. It is adaptable, like plastic. Hence neuroscientists call this neuroplasticity. How does neuroplasticity work? If you think of your brain as a dynamic, connected power grid, there are billions of pathways or roads lighting up every time you think, feel, or do something. Some of these roads are well-traveled. These are our habits, our established ways of thinking, feeling, and doing. Every time we think in a certain way, practice a particular task, or feel a specific emotion, we strengthen this road. It becomes easier for our brains to travel this pathway. Say we think about something differently learn a new task or choose a different emotion, we start carving out a new road. If we keep traveling that road, our brains begin to use this pathway more and this new way of thinking, feeling or doing becomes second nature. The old pathway gets used less and less and weakens. This process of rewiring your brain by forming new connections and weakening old ones is neuroplasticity in action. 
The good news is that we all have the ability to learn and change by rewiring our brains. If you have ever changed a bad habit or thought about something differently, you have carved a new pathway in your brain and experienced neuroplasticity firsthand. With repeated and directed attention towards your desired change, you can rewire your brain. Okay, so now that you have watched that video, here is your task. This is on the next page in your booklet. Have a go at these questions. How did the video describe the brain? What happens in our brain when we keep doing something the same way we have done it before? What happens when we do something new? What happens if we try this again? What happens when we change a bad habit or how we approach a difficult situation? So if you pause the video now and answer these questions in your booklet. Okay, so we're going to go through the answers. You could have written something like this. So, how did the video describe the brain? The brain changes throughout our lives. It's adaptable. There are billions of pathways that connect every time we think or do something. Question two. What happens when we keep doing something we have done before in our brain? Every time we do something we have done before, we strengthen the connections of that root in our brains and it becomes easier for us to do it each time. Practice make, makes perfect. But this means we can keep approaching some things with the wrong mindset if we don't change the way we approach it. What happens when we do something new? What happens if we try this again? If you choose to think about something differently or try a task in a new way, your brain makes new connections. If you keep trying this new way of thinking, feeling, doing, then your brain will use that way more than more and it will become easier and more natural. What happens when we change a bad habit or we approach a, dif a difficult situation? You carve a new pathway in your brain. So you may have written something similar to that or you may have put it in your own words if you want to add any extra sentences from here to your booklet, you can do that now. So a quick summary. This doesn't mean everyone can be really good at everything. But if you're willing to fail or make mistakes when you try something new or hard, you learn from those mistakes. If you give things a go, you still learn from not doing it perfectly. And if you give something a go and you can't do it straight away, it doesn't mean that you won't someday achieve it. Fail, first attempt in learning. And finally, and even if you don't achieve it, you will have learned different skills and mindsets by trying it. You'll be less afraid of failing or making mistakes next time. Okay, so that is really important. But failing isn't a bad thing it is a learning opportunity okay as you can see there first attempt in learning okay growth mindset versus fixed mindset so listen to the video your teacher will play in your book visualize what you hear try to draw and make small notes on the differences between growth and fixed mindset to help you remember what you learn so if we watch this video but you're just gonna play it with sound okay not so don't look at the video if you put your turn your screen the other way and just listen to the sound and try and in your booklet do some little drawings on what you can hear that's being said or little notes 
about growth mindset and fixed mindset. So I'll play the video now. Did you know there's a powerful relationship between what we believe about how we learn and our actual achievement? Dr. Carol Dweck studies students' beliefs about intelligence. What she found is that students generally hold one of two very different beliefs about intelligence. Some students have what she calls a fixed mindset. This is the belief that intelligence is a fixed trait that doesn't change much. So like eye color, these students believe you're born with a certain amount of intelligence and there's not much you can do to change it. Other students have a very different belief about intelligence. They have a growth mindset. They see intelligence more like a muscle. They understand that when you put in effort, you can get smarter. What we now know from study after study is that the more students have a growth mindset and believe that they can grow their intelligence, the better they do in school. Students with a growth mindset do better in school because they approach learning differently than students with a fixed mindset. For students with a fixed mindset, their goal in school is to show how smart they are or hide how dumb they think they are. This makes sense, right? If you think you're just born smart or dumb, you want to make sure you show that you are smart. So this makes fixed mindsetters much less likely to ask questions in class or seek out help from peers or teachers because that would involve showing that they don't know something. Students with a growth mindset, on the other hand, have the goal to learn, so they're more likely to ask a question if they don't understand or to seek out help or try a new strategy if they are struggling. When it comes to the amount of effort you have to put forth, students with a fixed mindset and students with a growth mindset see that differently as well. Those with a fixed mindset actually see effort as proof of low ability. They think that if you have to try hard, that means you aren't very smart. Whereas students with a growth mindset see effort as the way that you get smarter. How students react when they are faced with a challenge or setback in their learning is what really differentiates those with a fixed mindset and those with a growth mindset. Students with a fixed mindset will think that they are not smart and will likely give up on a task. Those with a growth mindset tend to work harder because they see it as an opportunity to learn and grow their intelligence. So if we can all grow our intelligence, are we saying that all students have equal ability? We aren't saying that everyone has the same level of intelligence. Having a growth mindset doesn't mean that you believe everyone has equal ability in every subject matter. It also doesn't mean that we believe some students aren't more talented in certain subjects than others. It means that you believe that no matter where a person is now, they can always improve with effort, good strategies, and help. And that's the number one piece of information you should take away from this lesson. No matter where a person is now, they can always improve with effort, good strategies, and help. So what I'd like you to do now is think about the visualizations you made and add anything perhaps you think you may have missed. Oh. So to help you further visualize, think about what are the behaviors, thoughts of people that believe intelligence, intelligence can be developed when they fail a test. They put a lot of effort into practicing for a basketball game, but still lose. They don't understand a math, pro pro a math problem. They are not putting any effort into their class, but are passing. Okay, so think of them questions. Look at the visualizations you have done from the video. Is there anything further that you think you can add? So we're gonna watch the video again. But this time, watch and compare your visualizations to what you can see this time. Okay, so this time, rather than just listening, you're going to look at the video 
Did you know there's a powerful relationship between what we believe about how we not. learn and our actual achievement? Dr. Carol Dweck studies students' beliefs about intelligence. What she found is that students generally hold one of two very different beliefs about intelligence. Some students have what she calls a fixed mindset. This is the belief that intelligence is a fixed trait that doesn't change much. So like eye color, these students believe you're born with a certain amount of intelligence and there's not much you can do to change it. Other students have a very different belief about intelligence. They have a growth mindset. They see intelligence more like a muscle. They understand that when you put in effort, you can get smarter. What we now know from study after study is that the more students have a growth mindset and believe that they can grow their intelligence, the better they do in school. Students with a growth mindset do better in school because they approach learning differently than students with a fixed mindset. For students with a fixed mindset, their goal in school is to show how smart they are or hide how dumb they think they are. This makes sense, right? If you think you're just born smart or dumb, you want to make sure you show that you are smart. So this makes fixed mindsetters much less likely to ask questions in class or seek out help from peers or teachers because that would involve showing that they don't know something. Students with a growth mindset, on the other hand, have the goal to learn. So they're more likely to ask a question if they don't understand or to seek out help or try a new strategy if they are struggling. When it comes to the amount of effort you have to put forth, students with a fixed mindset and students with a growth mindset see that differently as well. Those with a fixed mindset actually see effort as proof of low ability. They think that if you have to try hard, that means you aren't very smart. Whereas students with a growth mindset see effort as the way that you get smarter. How students react when they are faced with a challenge or setback in their learning is what really differentiates those with a fixed mindset and those with a growth mindset. Students with a fixed mindset will think that they are not smart and will likely give up on a task. Those with a growth mindset tend to work harder because they see it as an opportunity to learn and grow their intelligence. So if we can all grow our intelligence, are we saying that all students have equal ability? We aren't saying that everyone has the same level of intelligence. Having a growth mindset doesn't mean that you believe everyone has equal ability in every subject matter. It also doesn't mean that we believe some students aren't more talented in certain subjects than others. It means that you believe that no matter where a person is now, they can always improve with effort, good strategies, and help. And that's the number one piece of information you should take away from this lesson. No matter where a person is now, they can always improve with effort, good strategies, and help. Okay, so hopefully you've had a good chance to compare your visualizations with the diagrams now that were in the video and get a real feel of the difference between growth mindset and fixed mindset. So your next task is going to be writing a message um, to a friend or a future student about a time that they have struggled and your advice to them. So an example where someone may have struggled when I was in middle school, I remember struggling with added negative numbers. I had a hard time figuring out what a negative even meant when talking about a number. How can you have less than nothing? I ended up going through many practice problems and continuing to get many of them wrong. I was a very shy kid, so I didn't ask my teacher many questions. My thought was that I'd reached the peak of my math talent and it was all downhill from here. I eventually asked my mom, mum about this topic and she explained to me the basic concept of negative numbers. This helped me understand it a little, but it was still fuzzy to me. I then researched online for some real life context to show what these mystery numbers represented outside of some abstract universe. Some of them made sense and others didn't. 
I still didn't entirely get it and I was so frustrated that I wanted to just give up or continue hoping the negative numbers were not going to appear in math class ever again. I started to dislike math simply because I couldn't understand it anymore. Instead of entirely giving up on my academic career, I eventually mustered up the courage to ask my teacher for help as well. She explained it in a few different ways and gave me new strategies to try out. After some practice with these new strategies, I started to solidify my understanding of negatives, which allowed me to quickly pick up basic algebra afterwards. While it was a lot of work, I wanted to give up at many points during my journey. I eventually was able to rewire my brain so that negative numbers actually made sense to me. So some of you may be able to um, see how this person is feeling and you may have had similar experiences, whether it be with maths problems or different subject areas. And have a think about what did you do to overcome them? Could you have maybe asked your teacher and then would that have helped you along the way? So your next task is to write a message to a future student. Now write or record a message to a student who is struggling with something they don't think they can achieve or get through. In at least five sentences, give them advice on what they should do next and next time they encounter an obstacle when learning something new or how to face their struggle now. Use the example on the board to help you feel free to be creative as you like. Okay, so you may want to pause the video now and have a go at this task in your booklet. This is the example here. So you can see a student um, commenting about learning their multiplication tables and then how they um, got around it. All right, so your task is to message a future student. It can be on any topic and you can use this here as a guide to help. Once you have finished this task of writing your message or recording it to a future student, you will now move on to your final project. So what you are required to do is make a resource to teach about growth mindset, how the brain works, how the brain grows as it struggles to learn something new. Design a blog, website, app, poster, leaflet, video, song, etc. or anything else of your choice to show what are ways of making your brain grow. What is growth mindset? What is fixed mindset? How should you approach a, ch or a challenge or something you think may be difficult? You can use then this as your success criteria as you will be self-marking your project. Did you fully explain growth mindset and how the brain works? Present the topics and ideas clearly using formal language and varying what they say. Explain ideas fully, given reasons and consequences. This one, you're not really going to be able to do. Make a range of contributions to discussions, leading, encouraging and supporting others, as this was originally a group task. Okay, So it'll be one, two, three, and then you can look at five as well. Use software tools to create and enhance text, image, sound, animation and video components if you decide to do something online. So that is your final task, okay? Designing one of these and these are the questions that need to be answered. Okay, so here are some ideas of perhaps posters that show the difference between growth and fixed mindset. Instead of, I'm good at this, Try thinking, what am I missing? I give up. Try thinking, I use a different strategy. Now that you've been through this lesson, have a go at creating an origami penguin. But this time you'll have instructions. I want the penguin to be a reminder to you that over time and with a bit of help and a positive attitude, everyone can improve. Okay, so you're going to need a square piece of paper again. And there are the steps for you to follow. 
So if we just have a little look at this quote here. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life and that is why I succeed. Michael Jordan, you may re uh, recognize him as one of the world famous basketball players. And then finally, so at the end of your book now, if you complete the quiz again that we did at the start, total up your scores on the second part of the quiz and see if your mindset has changed at all. Think about what type of mindset did you have at the start of the lesson? What did you have at the end? Did your mindset change? Why do you think your mindset did or didn't change? And then finally, a little image for here for you, the iceberg, iceberg illusion. Success is an iceberg. What people see, what people don't see. Persistence, failure, sacrifice, disappointment, discipline, hard work, dedication. So I hope you have learned something from this PSE video. Play it back as often as you need and then use it to complete the booklet.